Okay, uh, the next thing we'll do is not really a region, but it's the next thing, working down the face, uh, the eyelids. And there's lots of controls here that are, uh, well, there's lots of different ways you can control the way that an eyelid works. Um, the first thing to show is in the tools panel, you can go to tune eyes, and you'll get some curves and tabs for each eyelid. Uh, and the first thing I usually do is just kind of rough it in with those curves. You can control shape and, and how the uh, eyelids actually act when you close them. Uh, let me just key these. Get the animation off of these guys. Okay. So if this is what you're going to consider the the closed point, uh, you can just zoom in here. You can go to there with like the left eyelid upper, and you have two curves. You have one for eyelid edge deformation and one for side direction tracking, which is kind of the sticky lid uh, effect. Uh, right now we're going to just be concerned with the shape of the eye. So you can uh, see with this curve, you can start to control exactly how that lid deforms when it gets to that point. Um, you can tweak this curve and add points to it and uh, adjust tangents all you want. And you can even, you know, make it close more and, and pull away from the controller if you want. Um, but for this this lid, you don't really need to do that much. Maybe, maybe a little something like that. And anyway, when you find the shape you want there, you can copy and paste it over to the to the other upper eyelid, right side. And so you can control kind of the shape without doing any kind of modeling or, you know, without getting into the geometry at all. So that's a really nice tool to to start kind of tweaking with, and you can get by with without doing a lot of vert by vert modeling. Uh, and then the other thing you can do in here is control how it's pulling these, these verts around the eyelid. So by default now it's, it's, uh, it's pulling these faces quite a lot up here, which doesn't really happen in real life. It's more of just an unfolding of that lid. So you might want to dampen that effect a bit. So you have two maps here as well. You have a bulge map and an edge map. And the bulge map uh, is which verts are affected by corneal bulge, which we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, and the edge map is what you want here. And that controls which verts are pulled down with the eyelid controller. So you can see that it's grabbed quite a lot of this up here. And you can just go in there and just erase that and those will pop back right up to where they where they started. Um, so you can pretty quickly go in here and and get that smoothed out and and uh, start to limit the amount of pulling that has on those neighboring verts. You might want to do even more than that. Something a little more like that. And now uh, you see you got some kind of bad shapes here and that's another place where I like to have a really small brush and then I can just kind of go in here and steer these verts back where I want them just with a really a low opacity on my my brush so again you can kind of get by without doing a lot of actual modeling here and it just makes it a little cleaner uh, this way because it's it's a map that you can get back to and and adjust over and over as you need to. So you can go in here and make sure all this stuff is kind of deforming where it needs to. I'll kind of stop there for now, but 
that's the idea. And then you can get much better kind of effect there on the on the eyelid closing. And so I'll just repeat that for the other eye. So there's another way to do this as well. You can actually get into a sculpting mode where you can basically model this exact state for this eye. So if you can't do what you want here with, with this tool, then there's uh, plenty of other more controllable options maybe. But I just like to do as much as I can at this point. So uh, that's, that's that. And then you can also do the same thing for the lower eyelids, although they, they typically are better by default because they don't they don't have to move quite so much, so those aren't those aren't bad. So let's say that's good, and then while I'm in here, I want to do in, you know adjust the tracking of these lids. So it comes in with a default amount of kind of stickiness on the eyelids, and which isn't bad, but I typically want to uh, tweak these curves a bit to do a little bit different uh, action. So on the left upper eyelid, let's just move this down about as far as you might get. That, I probably would want that to stick a little closer to the pupil. Let's just move these curves out. So it follows a little bit more closely that way. And that's not too bad. Maybe a bit strong, but... So when you get that curve like you want it, you can copy and paste that over to the other side as well. Just using Control c Control v So that should get the eyelids, upper eyelids working the same. And then for the lowers, those, when you look down very far, you want that to definitely leave enough uh, room for the pupil to, to see around it. So kind of do the same thing to that. Pull that down pretty good. And then the lower lids tend to, s to not follow quite as much when the eyelids lift it up. So you want to let that be a little bit lazier on the way up. So that's not too bad. Maybe a little bit less. Something like that. Control C. Control V. So that's not bad. So that kind of gives you a little bit better tracking. And then while we're here, uh, you might notice that there's not a lot of corneal bulge going on here. There's there's no real uh, movement going on underneath the eyelids, and that's because if you look at the, if our eyeballs on this model, they're pretty much just round so there's no there is no bulge so one nice thing about face robot is you can that's live so you can do that after the fact um, if we wanted to have more effect on those on those bulges you can just model that eyeball out a bit so grab that point Let's just pull that back a bit and you can see the eyelids moving with it there. So you can, I'll really amp this up so it's, it's an obvious effect. It's a lot, a lot more bulge than you'll probably want typically, but you should be able to see this clearly now. So you can see that pushing 
the eyelid around pretty good there. A little easier to see if you close the eyelids. So you can amp that you know as much as you want. You can uh, push those those eyelids. And uh, one thing we would do at Blur actually, since we didn't actually use the eye objects out of uh, Face Robot, we used the uh, animation that was in the animation file for those. So I could actually go in and really crank up the uh, the bulge on the on the eyeballs just to get the effect. Um, and then for those shots where they're not so close, you could still kind of read that a bit and still not need, you know, the eyeball to, to actually match that closely. Okay, and then like I said that bulge map will control which parts are being affected by that. So let's say we go into this lower eyelid bulge and you can erase that influence just to see. So you can see if I paint it back on it accepts that bulge back again. So you can control exactly which parts of the surrounding area actually do bulge.